Okay, welcome to this GCSE revision video. This is the component two uh, topic, Christian practices. Christian practices. And this is uh, video five of five videos. And in this last video, we're going to be looking at the work uh, for reconciliation, Christian attitudes to other religions and the work for reconciliation. Now, around the world, Christians uh, do face persecution, uh, past and present. And in the last few years, uh, perhaps tens of thousands of Christians have lost their lives for their faith in Christ. And persecution uh, is a word that can mean just suffering because of loss of reputation or people calling you names, all the way through to martyrdom. Um, a martyr is someone who dies or is killed for their religious beliefs. Um, in Iraq, uh, during the Gulf Wars of the last decade, uh, 80,000 Christians died because of their belief from the Yazidis to the other uh, ancient, history, his, ancient Christians of Iraq who refused to give up their Christian faith and fled for their lives and still live, many of them, they haven't died in in camps on the borders of Iraq. Jesus himself was a martyr. He warned the disciples that they would be persecuted for their faith. Each one of them was eventually martyred. Christians believe that they were given a divine commission from Jesus to spread the good news of the gospel. And this may be in the face of personal danger, um, from a little bit of uncomfortable suffering through to possible martyrdom. Christian persecution continues in the 21st century throughout the world every year and in most parts of the world. In some parts of the world, Christians are treated unjustly in societies where the Christian faith is a minority religion. For example, terrorist organizations like the Islamic State in the Middle East have targeted Christians. As I said, 80,000 Christians died in Iraq, forcing them out of their homes. They would paint a little, look like an end sign on their doors. And it really meant Nazarene, a follower of the, uh, the, the Nazarene. And subjecting them in what followed to violent attacks and execution. Evangelical Christian organizations such as Christian Freedom International and Open Doors seek to help persecuted Christians. These organizations provide practical help to persecuted Christians, providing Bibles and world uh, active and, and work actively for human rights of Christians in suffering persecution. So it's very hard to know exactly the figures, but it's estimated 322 Christians are killed for their faith each month. 214 churches and Christian properties are destroyed. 772 forms of violence are committed against Christians, such as beatings, abductions, rapes, arrest, forced marriages. And personal testimonies from places like North Korea uh, and beyond China and beyond abound. Open Doors was established because of just such experiences of Christians in 1955 when Brother Andrew, a Dutch missionary, smuggled Bibles into the Soviet Union where Christians were being persecuted. Today, Open Door still supports persecuted Christians across the world in different ways, distributing Bibles, uh, training Christians and church leaders to deal with the tra trauma people might be suffering whilst maintaining their faith, providing practical support for Christians who have been victims of disasters, speaking on behalf of persecuted Christians, to raise awareness of their situation and gather support. For example, they might lobby MPs in the UK and government. People in the UK and Ireland support their work both practically and financially. So the work of Christian reconciliation. Um, in the Christian church, there are many denominations which have caused, which has caused some conflict in, in the past. Think Protestants and Catholics in Europe. Many believe it's important for different denominations to work together as much as possible. And living in a pluralist society means reconciliation is more important now than ever. It's only in the last couple of decades 
that, for example, in Northern Ireland, the peace process, 1998, the Good Friday peace process was signed. And Ireland has examples, the Corrie Mila Centre of Reconciliation in uh, up in the north coast of, of Northern Ireland, Ballycastle, really important uh, way of bringing together um, Catholics and Protestants from across the region for reconciliation. And Corrie Mila is an example of an, an ecumenical uh, practice. The ecumenical movement means Christians of different churches and the ecumenical movement is an attempt to bring closer together different Christian denominations and to promote Christian unity throughout the world. The movement aims ultimately to unite all Christians. As a result of the ecumenical movement, there is much more cooperation between different Christian denominations, such as different churches sharing a common building and joint ecumenical services. Although denominational differences still exist, today many Christians believe there should be one church. At a local level, many churches actually cooperate and work together. Then there's the World Council of Churches which describes itself as a worldwide fellowship of churches seeking to uh, unify, to, to seeking unity, uh, a common witness and a Christian service. The aim of these churches is to be a quote, visible sign, deepening communion, sharing the gospel together and making connections. Each year, the World Council of Churches, the WCC, holds a special week of prayer for Christian unity, and it brings together churches in more than 110 countries. Roman Catholic Church isn't a member of the WCC, but it does take part in some of the national and local ecumenical organizations. At a local level, Churches Together in England grew out of the work of the WCC and is a practical attempt to focus locally on the fellowship of those who share the Christian faith. The aim today is to offer practical ways of achieving greater unity. During the week of prayer for Christian unity each January, special ecumenical services are organized and you can see in the bottom here a prayer god of life lead us to justice and peace typical prayer of the ecumenical movement so this is video five of five videos on the topic christian practices uh, do try and uh, use some of the quizlets to learn quotation do some of the practice questions and the topic tests.